Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's afternoon Bible study and live stream. Today, we're going to be jumping into Zechariah chapter 8. So I invite you to grab your Bibles, read along with me as we read through Zechariah chapter 8. Promised blessings for Jerusalem. But before we get to that, I'd just like to take um, you know a couple seconds to reflect on what we read last time. It's been almost a week since we've read. Uh, so last time it was the call to justice and mercy. And essentially what's been going on in Zechariah is he's been having these dreams, these visions um, for the return from exile. So the Israelite people, they've been in exile for about 70 years. And that's what was promised in like, um, I believe it was uh, Haggai, I could be wrong. Uh, but and they're like, okay, so 70 years is basically up. Where, When are we going back home? And then Zechariah has been going like, hey, here's all these things that could be. You know, uh, the escape from uh, exile, the rebuilding of Jerusalem, the future king, all this stuff can happen. You can have that forgiveness, that redemption, that restoration if you end up following me. Like, if your hearts have actually changed, then, you know, these things can start happening. If not, you're going to stay in exile. Um, so that's kind of what uh, the imagery and stuff like that, what it's all been kind of pointing to. And, um, yeah, uh, we're going to continue here with Chapter 8. Um, so I'm going to take a sip of my coffee, and then we're going to get started with Zechariah Chapter 8. Then another message came to me from the Lord of Heaven's armies. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies says. My love for Mount Zion is passionate and strong. I am consumed with passion for Jerusalem. And now the Lord says, I am returning to Mount Zion and I will live in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city. The mountain of the Lord of Heaven's army will be called the Holy Mountain. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Once again, old men and women will walk Jerusalem's streets with their canes and will sit together in the city squares. And the streets of the city will be filled with boys and girls at play. Sorry, I lost my spot. Uh, at play. Verse 6. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. All this may seem impossible to you now. A small remnant of God's people. But it is impossible. But is it impossible for me? Says the Lord of Heaven's armies. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. You can be sure that I will rescue my people from the east and the west. I will bring them home again to live safely in Jerusalem. They will be my people and I will be faithful and just towards them as their God. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Be strong and finish the task ever since the laying of the foundation of the temple of the Lord of Heaven's armies, you have heard what the prophets have been saying about completing the building. Before the work on the temple began, there were no jobs and no money to hire people or animals. No traveler was safe from the enemy, for there were enemies on all sides, and I turned everyone against each other. But now I will not treat the remnant of my people as I treated them before, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. For I am planting seeds of peace and prosperity among you. The grapevines will be heavy with fruit, and the earth will produce its crops, and the heavens will release the dew. Once more, I will cause the remnant in Judah and Israel to inherit these blessings. 
Among the other nations, Judah and Israel will become symbols of a cursed nation. But no longer, uh, sorry, I'm going to reread verse 13. Among the other nations, Judah and Israel became symbols of a cursed nation. But no longer. Now I will rescue and make you both a symbol and a source of blessing. So don't be afraid. Be strong and get on with rebuilding the temple. For this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. I was determined to punish you when your ancestors angered me. And I did not change my mind, says the Lord of Heaven's army. But now I am determined to bless Jerusalem and the people of Judah. So don't be afraid. But this is what you must do. Tell the truth to each other. Render verdicts in your courts that are just and that lead to peace. Don't scheme against each other. Stop your love of telling lies that you swear are the truth. I hate all these things, says the Lord. Here is another message that came to me from the Lord of Heaven's armies. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. The traditional feasts and times of mourning you have kept in early summer, midsummer, autumn, and winter are now ended. They will become festivals of joy and celebration for the people of Judah. So love, truth, and peace. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. People from the nations and cities around the world will travel to Jerusalem. The people of one city will say to other, to the people of others, of other, of, sorry, verse 21. The people of one city will say to the people of another, come with us to Jerusalem to ask the Lord to bless us. Let's worship the Lord of heaven's armies. I'm determined to go. Many peoples and powerful nations will come to Jerusalem to seek the Lord of heaven's armies and to ask for his blessings. This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. In those days, 10 men from, nation, from different nations and languages of the world will clutch at the sleeve of one Jew. And they will say, please let us walk with you for we have heard that God is with you. May God add a blessing to uh, Zechariah chapter 8. Um, yeah. So uh, this was interesting. This was kind of cool. Um, can you imagine that your um, parents, or maybe your grandparents, uh, were once occupying this one land, and then got kicked out and the land got ravished and you hear stories about how great it was and how is this like one you know amazing land and you've never been able to see it it's always been hostile and you've been living in like captivity and almost borderline slavery like can you put yourself into those shoes that's where Zachariah is. That's where Zachariah is talking to, where the people have been moaning and waiting and waiting and waiting to go back to this promised land after being set out into exile. And, you know, they heard of all the awful things that led them to God saying, yeah, you guys are going to get kicked out of this place. The lying, the cheating, the forsaking the lives of others for money, the selling their children into slavery, uh, into the sex trade and like, you know, crazy things. Um, and that's why God was like, yeah, you guys are going to be moving on. And then to be like, okay, the opportunity is in front of us to go back. Like this broken down, beaten down, leveled city that you've only heard stories of, that you've read about in your books, that you've heard about, that belongs to you but you can't ever get there you're now being told not only are you going to get there but it's going to be a thriving place and you get to play a pivotal role 
in reestablishing and living in this place of your grandparents. That's crazy and it can seem unbelievable. But this is the promise that Zechariah is laying forth. This is the promise, the reality in which he, he and the people that he's writing to are living in. This impossibility that seems possible by human effort is possible with God. Um, as I was reading that part, I was reminded of some of the other chapters where it was like, okay, so, you know, I know you're tempted to lean on Egypt or you're, I know you're tempted to lean on these people to get you through, but don't lean on them, lean on me. I'm reminded of earlier on in Zechariah where it says, you know, God wants to be the wall to not put up these, these walls, but like God be the wall and let other nations come and worship God there uh, without that, the, the barriers. Um, and we see that again, that other nations are going to come. Part of the promise of this is that other nations are going to come. One of the big things with Jesus was when, you know, he, you know, gave up his life on the cross, um, which, you know, this is Holy Week. This is one of those things that we, we're celebrating that are, hopefully is at the forefront of our minds, um, that Jesus came and he willingly laid down his life on that cross. When he did so, it wasn't just for the Israelite people. It wasn't just for, for the Jewish nation. It was for everybody across the world, all nations and creeds and everything in between. For people in Zimbabwe, people in uh, New York, people in New Zealand and people here in Canada and everything in between. Urinal, uh, Russia, um, you know, everything. God did it for all of us. Um, and not just the world at that time, but for all time, the ultimate sacrifice um, that we get to live in that hope and that promise restoration in our lives. We can feel like we have messed up so much. We have burned way too many bridges. We have fallen short far too often. And it seems impossible to get back to this place, this promise place, this place where, you know, Every step wasn't full of guilt or self-hate. And it is possible to get back there. It might not be possible through our own effort, but it is possible when we partner with Jesus, when we hand our burdens over to him. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen instantaneously. It's a process. And it's a continually giving and sharing and walking with. But it, it might seem impossible, but it is not impossible with God. So that's one of those big things that I got out of that. But even in what I just said, there's that doubling down of this other thing that was echoed all the way up uh, in uh, Zechariah up to this moment. It's these are the promises if, if you do this. So, you know, stop lying, stop doing all of this stuff, right? Like there's the command attached to it. Yeah, you've gotten better. You're not offering your children into, you know, slavery. You're, you, you might not be forsaking the lives of others for money like you, you guys were once known to do, but you're still lying. You're still doing these things that are wrong. And that's where Jesus comes in, right? Because we might be falling short all the time, but when we walk with Jesus, he helps us to walk on that right path. Where in this day and age, where when Zechariah was writing this, they just had the law. They just had the guardrails. They didn't have that personal relationship with God like we have now. Or, or that is open to us now. So, yeah, that, that if, I think, is a really big thing. And, you know, God will forgive your sins. No ifs, ands, or buts. He will do it. If you want to be forgiven, ask and he will forgive you. And he will help teach you and walk with you on that right path of your life. Let us pray. AJC, awesome Jesus Christ. I thank you for uh, Zechariah chapter 8. I thank you uh, for sending the Israelites into exile at that time. And that we can read and, and see what's going on in the people's lives back then. And how important it is for them then, but also for us here now. That, yeah, we might fall short. We might have all 
these different things that we think separate us from your love and your forgiveness and your redemption. And there's a lot of people that are following you that are doing a really poor job of representing your love in the world, that are representing your restoration and your hope in this world. But Lord, they aren't who we're getting saved to. We're not getting saved from for these people and to impress these people, but for you, Lord. And we're going to be screwing up along the way and you come alongside us, Lord. And I thank you so much for that to help get us and guide us back on that path. So Lord, may we be open to hear you, open to your guidance and help us to walk on that path because we can't do it ourselves. We need you, Lord. And help us to act justly, help us to love mercy and help us to walk humbly with you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, guys, thank you very much once again for joining me. I look forward to jumping into it tomorrow as we uh, continue our journey through Zechariah, one chapter at a time. And yeah, have a great day. God bless.